Take a look at this. A unified access point, same spot in my house, one's wired and the other one's mesh, but the speeds are way different within Wi-Fi Man. Mesh Wi-Fi is super convenient, but it can give you some seriously slow speeds if it's not set up right. And today I'm gonna to show you why, test it out properly, and help you decide whether mesh or wired backhaul is the better choice for your Unify setup. First thing we'll talk about is, well, why do people use mesh? Most people end up looking at mesh networks for the same reason. There's a spot inside that you just can't get a cable to. Maybe it's a garden office, a shed, a corner of your house where drilling and running cables just isn't worth the time and the effort. And Unify makes it really easy just to power on a second AP, get it adopted, extended coverage, but there's a hidden cost to it if you're not careful, and that is your speed. When you mesh two APs together like this, they link over wireless, usually five gigahertz, sometimes six gigahertz. The catch, the radio now has to handle two different jobs. It's pulling the data and it's sending it back to your device, and it's doing that in both directions. That means every hop that you set up your mesh, you're cutting your bandwidth in half. Add another AP meshing off the first, and it gets worse and worse, and we're gonna take a look at that just shortly. But for gaming, streaming, 4K, and big file transfers, you'll definitely notice something the more hops that you have. And if you can wire your APs back to your switch, there's no hidden bandwidth loss, no extra latency, and it scales so much better. Especially if you have a busy network and there's loads of devices, roaming from one access point to another is a lot smoother, the speed stays consistent, and you don't have to think about interference as much. So let's make this real. I have two access points here, a U7 Pro and a U7 Pro XGS. I'm gonna take the U7 Pro and plug this into my eight port PoE switch that I have on the side just here. And you'll see that blue light power on in just a second. And on this side, I have a PoE adapter. So we can go and just literally give this power. There's no network running to this. You can see there's only one cable going in there. And we will take this out and pop this in like so. So now we have two access points that we're gonna test. So we're gonna do a speed test. We're gonna use Wi-Fi Man. We're gonna use a speed test on here, and then we're gonna do a speed test on here, and we can see what the differences are between the two. After we've done that, we'll come back and we'll do another hop, just so you can see what happens with the latencies. So let me show you what's going on. They're plugged in. One's already adopted, so the U7 Pro XG, that is adopted right there. And we're gonna be adopting the U7 Pro XGS. So it's still plugged into my PoE injector. It's not plugged in anywhere else. And so there's no wire running to the main network. So it's gonna mesh in terms of its approach. And it's that easy. You just click wireless meshing must be enabled on your host AP before adopting device. So making sure it's set up as a parent. So currently the U7 Pro XG is set up as a mesh connect, which means it can only join to a parent. It doesn't act as a parent. So we need to click mesh parent, apply changes, let that go off and apply. And then once that's done, we can come back and adopt this device. Okay, then we can click adopt and we can see that's now ready to adopt and it's saying it's set up as a mesh and it's showing its parent device at the moment, but we'll give it a few moments, let that adopt, let it get updated and we'll come back and we'll run a couple of tests. That's been adopted and all updated so we can see where parent device is the U7 Pro XG at the moment. If I quickly show you the Wi-Fi settings, I have AP1 and AP2 set up. So AP1 is the hardwired one that's going into the network. And then we have AP2, which is then connected as a mesh up link to the U7 Pro XG. So there's only one hop at the moment. The final thing I'm gonna show you is actually on the device itself. So if we go to the U7 Pro XGS, you can see it's meshing and what the connectivity is and how good it is. So you can see that at any point. And then also, if we go to the settings, you can scroll down to the bottom and you can see what the uplink priority is. So do you wanna fix it to a specific uplink? Do you want the AC Pro, the U7 Pro XG, the U7 Pro XGS? So we want the U7 Pro XG, we wanna make sure it uplinks to that. And if you want a second priority to make sure it connects to something else in case it doesn't, so we can do that and click apply. So that is the uplink priority set. So I know now when I actually end up meshing this one as the final test, it will still connect, stay connected to this one. So if I jump into my Wi-Fi settings first, I can see AP1, which is the hardwired AP, so I'm gonna to connect to that, so we'll give that one second. And once that's connected, we'll go back to Wi-Fi Man and it will show me that I'm now connected to AP1 at the top, and that's my signal. We'll let Wi-Fi Man kick in in just a second. So in terms of signal strength, I've got minus 44 dBm, and then throughput wise, we're getting around 850, 900 megabits per second in terms of throughput. So, and then the physical link is 2401 and 2401, that's down and up. And then we're gonna now connect to AP2. So this is what it looks like on AP1. 
So if we now connect to the mesh, we go back to Wi-Fi settings, we can see AP2. So for some reason, when I got that set up, I had to rename the access point from AP2 to access point two. I just couldn't figure out why it wasn't connecting, but that's now connecting, we can see right here, so we can go back to Wi-Fi Man. And if we take a look at Wi-Fi Man, you can see we're now connected to the U7 Pro XGS, and you can see right there, this is just one hop. Look at what's happened to my throughput. It's dropped to nearly 450, 500 megabits per second. It's still climbing. In terms of my signal strength, we're still really good. Minus 33 dBm. And keep in mind that these two access points are right next to each other. The further the access point is, the lower quality of signal you're gonna have between the two. So keep that one in mind when you're getting them set up. So the final test I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull my network connectivity from my switch back to my network. So both of these will then be powered by PoE. So what I'm gonna see, I'm gonna pull this plug right here and I've lost my network connectivity now back to the main switch and you can see my access point has just gone dead because this initial access point has lost its network connectivity and we'll give it a minute and we'll let it remesh and get set up again and we'll come back and take a look at what's happening. So let me set the scene of how this is actually working. So I have my U7 Pro Max, which is just outside my office, which is connected to my main network, so the Pro HD. We have the U7 Pro XG, which is right here, which is then meshed to that U7 Pro Max. And then I have the U7 Pro XGS, which is then meshed to the U7 Pro XG, and then that goes to the U7 Pro Max. So multiple hops along the way, it kind of sets the scene exactly what's going on, and we can then run some of those tests. So there's an additional hop that we're gonna look at. So I'm connecting to my access point, which is just outside, so not the highest, we're getting about 450 megabits per second. I still have the same AP setup as they were, so if I go to AP1, if I go to AP1 and connect that way, you can see I'm now connected to AP1, so my bandwidth has then gone in half, so we're down to 120 megabits per second and then if I go to access point two which is an additional hop which is just there so if we get connected to that one there we go we've gone from cellular to access point two just let this kick in so we can see that, that right there in terms of signal strength and if we go to throughput and if we go to throughput we're hovering around about 100 megabits per second and it's dropping to and from to and from so we can definitely see that the more hops we do the lower the speed you're gonna to get to a point where it's just not gonna be worth making any additional hops. So meshing isn't bad, but it's just not a magic fix either. Use it where it makes sense and wire where you can is gonna be what I say to you. And you'll have a network that works perfectly fine. So then the final question begs is, well, which one do you use? For me, I will always say wire the APs wherever you can. You'll thank yourself later just for the speed, the stability, and the roaming capability as well between the access points, and you don't need to worry about what you're using on which AP. And then use yourself a mesh network when you don't have another option. If it's something that you're gonna use in a temporary setup, an outdoor garden, where there's not gonna be a lot of high bandwidth usage and you're not very particular about the connection you're gonna have, you just need some sort of internet access, then something like this would be good. A quick tip for you, you might wanna set the decibel reading around minus 60 dBm between the two access points, so make sure you don't go any further than that, as you might start seeing an even weaker signal. So mesh isn't all bad, but it's not the magic fix either. So run the wire where you can, where it makes sense, and then you'll have a network that works perfectly fine. But what I wanna know is how your Unify setup is. Are you all wired? Are you all meshed? Are you somewhere in between? Drop me a comment down below and let me know if you're using a mesh network and how you're using it. I'm curious to see what you're running as well. For now, this is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.